Hello, my name's Mel Ashworth and welcome to Coffee with a Counsellor. I have the pleasure of speaking this morning with uh, Richard Tucker. Thank you, Richard, for coming That's in. That's right, Mel. Thanks for the invite. Now, could I ask you which ward you represent? Yes, uh, on the town council, it's Earlham Ward, which Earlham. basically covers the sort of bottom half of Milton Road, mm -hmm. parts of Earlham Grove itself, most of Locking Road from about Ashcombe Road, yes. down as far as Ewart Road okay. and towards the Borough Arms. Well, you know it's, your ward very well. Oh, I live there, yeah, yes. 14 oh, years, well, so yeah. Is, it's Every road, I think. It's a good idea to live in the ward that you... Represent. I think that's important, definitely. We always encourage that, and yeah. the local Labour Party, we all try and get people that actually live in the ward and in the communities that, they, that they're supposed to represent. Yeah. I think it's wrong that you get people from the other side of town to just wheel them in just because it's a safe seat. I yeah. don't really believe in that, good. and that's pretty much How policy. long have you been a councillor, Richard? Um, just got in last May, um, mm -hmm. but I had been on uh, on the town council from when it, it, from its inception back in two thousand. Oh, okay. Um, and I was I won three times on the trot, then got defeated in two thousand and seven, yeah. lost to the Conservatives. But I just just won it back off them in two thousand and seven. Right. So marginal seat so thank you very much a lot of hard work and <laughs> yeah you just never know which way the political wind is going to blow really particularly yeah. when, when you're representing a marginal area right what got you into local politics can you explain initially I, well, I first stood when i was 24 believe it or not wow. but yeah back in 19 so five years ago yeah i'd be all right wouldn't it when i wasn't gray i got a picture when i got first elected in um 1995 yeah Full head of hair, <laughs> no grey. <laughs> I was 30 at the time for the old Ashcombe Ward, which covers most of where I, yeah. I, I cover now. They, they redraw the boundary yes. a bit. But uh, initially, I, I'd always been interested politically. Yes. Um, from when I was, I went to Broadoak Sixth Form when I was about what, 18, 19. Really? And then uh, I, I joined the Labour Party at that, um, <coughs> at that time. Um, it was quite a low ed nationally when mm. we had Michael Foot. I don't know if you can go back that far, yeah. but yeah. it was in oh, the kind of you. Thatcher era. <laughs> yes, <I can>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, they were quite sort of dark days for a lot of people, but um, I suppose I've always been kind of on the side of the underdog a little bit. And um, yeah. Western, for, for Western in, for Labour in Western, we've always been kind of the underdog. So. Uh, Mm. Um, and that, that was my kind of broad view anyway. Yes. I've always been kind of centre <coughs> left in terms of my own view of society. Yes. yes. And uh, when it got to about to 18, 1989, I think it was, Avon County Council elections. Mm. And the party was always short of candidates. Always, yes. They didn't really have much organisation. Yes. Um, so I kind of put myself forward just to fill a seat. Yeah. And they stuck me out in Banwell, um, locking. Uh, Hutton, mm -hmm. Priory Division as they called it, Okay. and uh, I, I just sort of, they gave, gave me a thousand leaflets to cover about 4,000 areas, so I kind of picked out the most sort of working class areas if you like, right. and uh, I, I, my mate who wasn't even sort of a Labour supporter but was quite sort of um, thrilled or, or excited by the fact that it, his young mate was kind of uh, standing for council yes. with all these old people. Yes. And the, he kind of, he worked as a gas fitter, so he knew a lot of these areas oh, okay. out in that area. So yeah. he kind of acted as <coughs> a kind of self-appointed agent, really. <laughs> and uh, we sort of drove around all these uh, little pockets here and yeah. there and helped me deliver them. Fantastic. Yeah, so oh. I sort of surprised everyone by coming second. I beat the Liberal right. Democrats yes. into second place. Wow. Which, uh, and how old were you then? 24. Good, yeah. good on yeah. you. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Were you born in this area? Yeah, yeah, oh. born in Weston, both my parents, okay. two of my grandparents. But my, my mum's side goes back to, um, she's, when her and one of her relations researched it, goes back through Milton and uh, uphill to about 1600 and something. Yeah, it's very interesting. Milton, yeah, most of the sort of farmers, yeah. uh, carpenters. So, yeah, fascinating. So you're a Westonian, born and bred. Pretty much, with a bit of Welsh, South Wales oh, a bit thrown of Welsh. in. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So that's probably why I can chat on a bit, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What's my excuse? Not, not um, <laughs> what career did you go into then, uh, uh, Richard? Well, when I first, <coughs> first job, um, I worked at a bank in Bristol, so, or should I say, uh, insurance okay, clerk. Yeah. So, uh, Nat West for five years. Yeah. 
Um, then I went into building supplies, mm. sort of sales orientated yes, jobs. Yes. Um, then office equipment. Yeah. Um, that's, I don't, yeah, that's pretty much okay. been. Okay, you've got to be able to it. talk to people, haven't you? Not to a large as degree. a counsellor, you have you to be able to listen approachable, and, I think. and talk. That's right. Yeah, you that's can't right. be a shy little retiring thing in so the back. Are. Room, you, you, I think there's, there's probably places for all types of people. Okay. Because you, you, you sometimes tend to find the more reserved ones can be very good on detail. Right. And you get a lot of interesting. documents and um, research that's required. Mm. You often find those sort of, sort of more reserved types of characters are quite good at uh, okay. do, going through their sort of meeting, pre-meeting documents. So all different skills that are, are valuable. You've got to be a bit of an all-rounder, yes. I think, yes. really. Okay. Because I was going to ask you, what do you think makes a good counsellor? Um, and to be an all-rounder, you know. I think understanding and, and, and having a sort of, ha having a, a passion for the area, I think. Yes. Um, and, and the area you live in within that. Mm. Um, so a passion for community? I'd say so, broadly yeah. speaking. It's, I mean, politics, I suppose, is about people. Mm. Uh, and they, they say it's the art, art of the possible, isn't it? That's, that's mm. one quote I've heard. And um, it's, it's about trying to make a difference on a local level. Yeah. Uh, at, at, at sort of parliamentary level and, and, and obviously higher up the chain, you can make sort of big pronouncements and make sort of it depends if you're in power quite quite a lot makes a big big difference of course yes but there, there's there's a lot sort of wider differences that you can make at that level but mm. um on a, on a local level if, if it's the area that you particularly care about there's there's a lot that you can you can influence yes even if you don't particularly have uh, your hands on the lever of power mm. you can kind of make your views known and uh, a, a word in the right to the right person yes. and try and canvas other people to uh, to your opinion. Mm. Sometimes you might change your own opinion in, by what you get back off of them. Mm. And it's all about gathering information and just getting to the right decision in your mind, really. Mm. Mm. For when votes, and if you're honest with yourself that you're voting the right way, mm. you can kind of hold your head up, I think. Yes, yes. That's how I look at it. Um, what are you particularly passionate about as a councillor? I think to ensure that where, that local people's decisions or, or views are reflected and carried out because I think there's too much remoteness once pe people get into the corridors of power let's say there's, there's often a feeling or a bit of an arrogance that goes with it not not to say that people in, in, in power I are, are arrogant in, in that yes. way but there's, there's a feeling of we know best type of thing yes and the public haven't got all the information so so what do they know but broadly speaking, people people have a have a have a broad view on something. Mm. Um, often it's it's not quite as straightforward as, as, as might be painted. Sometimes there are different strands and, and different mm. kind of elements within that. But if you can kind of pick up what's broadly what, what's broadly the, the 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 feeling on the ground type of thing and make sure that's reflected in in the council and in the council chamber that's what matters to me so it's it's totally important to stay relevant to the people that you're that's representing right. exactly. and to yeah. and to stay real and keep your feet on the ground as it were that's, yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what really matters at the end of the day you yeah. see people sort of climb up the pole and sort of turn their back on um, the people that put them there like break promises all over the place like yeah, uh, this is what's Nick Clegg so and the like and yeah I'm not saying that just because you're a Lib Dem by the way but <laughs> that's, he's, he's a classic case in point isn't he where he's conned people to vote for him and a lot of people voted for him tactically because they think he's anti-Tory and as soon as he gets in he jump, he basically teams up with the Tories turns his back on half those people that voted for him just to get in in power and he was his own, a lot of his own party of, of, of Thought, of, thought that, but uh, that, now, that's national. moving on, <laughs> moving on swiftly, three people you'd like to invite to a dinner party. People that have inspired you, dead or alive, that you'd love to meet. Going, going back through history. So, um, Briefly. Yeah, okay, okay. Someone like Bodicea, probably. That's one for you. Okay, next Celtic one. Celtic Queen. 
Um, I suppose everyone comes up with Nelson Mandela, but you can't help respect that man exactly. for what he went through. Exactly. Uh, Third one? Um, somebody like... Um, I have to come back. I have okay. to come back. No, I won't just say it all for the sake of it. Okay. No. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure talking. All right then, Mel. Thank you and yourself. Thank you. And that's it from Coffee with a Counselor. So thank you so much for tuning in. And please do email your questions to us. But from us today, it's goodbye. Thank you. Good cheerio. Thanks, Mel. Thanks. <laughs>